Hey everybody, this is 2K Low, and welcome to my channel. Weirdly enough, this probably isn't going to be the normal content you'll see here, even if this is my first video. Just to get it out of the way, the reason I started with this is because I truly care about GTFO. I think it's a phenomenal game with tons of potential, and I want to see it succeed. The direction the devs are taking is awesome as well, but I'm starting to see a pattern I personally don't want to stick, and that pattern is difficulty from the wrong sources. Spoilers ahead, but if you didn't already know about Rundown 2 stuff, you're too late anyway. <laughs> also, do keep in mind while watching this video, this is purely an opinion piece and should be taken with a grain of salt. I won't sit here and blow smoke up your ass and tell you that this is what the community wants, but I think it's definitely worth talking about. Ten Chambers, if you do happen to watch this, feel free to do whatever you want with these ramblings. And on that note, let's get to it. Starting with the good. GTFO from the beginning had my attention. The first time I saw it was like three years ago. I seem to remember a trailer for it that had a group of people going through a facility and eventually running into these hulking invisible monsters. I didn't realize until the new trailer released recently that the game was even still in production. My buddy Nark and I started playing the game together and we were immediately hooked. We ran Rundown 1 with some randos getting all the way through to D1 in a couple of weeks. By the beginning of the Rundown 2, we had duoed all of Rundown 1 and went into 2 confident brimming with excitement for the new stuff. A1, easy. We went to see B2 first, so we did that. Narc clutched the end with one health and no resources first try, which I have a video of all the first attempts coming later. We first tried every level. But then came C1. Like a computer that hadn't been dusted for 10 years, just completely bricked. Our momentum was gone, our spirits most definitely crushed, but we loved it mostly, and we managed to beat it pre-nerf. C2, while the new concept was hard to grasp at first, we made it through post-nerf. D1, while I personally didn't love going through the map not being able to see, the concept was cool and it was really challenging. Beating it felt really good, especially since we were 2 out of the 1,000 people that managed to do it before the Warden restriction was lifted. D2 is probably my favorite level out of all of them. The concept's cool, it keeps you on your toes, and you can dynamically choose how to play the map. Stealthy or loud, although loud is definitely easiest and most effective. 2K, you might be thinking, you've only praised this game so far, I thought you were upset. I want to see some fervor, stick with your thesis statement, and to that I say, gosh teacher, I thought this was my video. Jokes and praise aside, you probably saw this coming if you played it, but E1 is abysmal. Ten Chambers once again saved the real crazy shit for last. Alarm doors that require every person to be on scans multiple times. Which is fine, it adds an extra bit of urgency and feels like you're really relying on your team not to get downed, but... Really? Sleeping invisible giants that are not only stupid hard to see, but can run like Sonic on cocaine. You, you know what? Fine. I forgive it. There's cheese spots anyway. If I don't want to deal with the invisible addicts, I don't have to. Alright, spent two hours cheesing the bulk of facility. Let's extract. Wait, you mean to tell me that after two hours, we have to run through an equally large second area, dodging or killing constantly spawning enemies while looking for batteries, while simultaneously trying to clear out rooms and live on just the resources we have on us? Wow. Well, maybe maybe it's not that bad. Maybe we can take these batteries from the other room and take it with us. Wait, we have to carry a to fog turbine, too. So basically, everyone needs to hold something, making us slower and having to put down our stuff in order to put down tools, fire a weapon, or literally do anything else. Okay, fine. I mean, look at how many enemies are spawning. So many. My game was like, I'm going to let you finish, but your computer needs like 12 more RAM. This looked impossible. Ultimately, it isn't impossible. We've seen people do it. There's physical evidence. There's a decently well-known strategy, but is it fun? For me, three major things ruin a game's immersiveness and fun. One is backtracking. I usually don't like it. Done right, it can, it can be fun, like in D2. The back and forth on that map is incredible because you're constantly unlocking new areas each time and running back through doesn't seem like a hassle. It's more like seeing a close friend before moving on to different horizons. E1 doesn't seem to have that issue. Unless you're doing the cheese spot, then you're constantly going back to the beginning. But it's a fair price to pay for safety and cheesing the area. 
And the second thing is having to wait. Nobody wants to wait for things. They want to do the pew pew and then the bam bam and then they go on immediately to the next shazam. You know what I'm saying? I've got the attention span of a fucking goldfish, so maybe that's just me. E1 has a lot more trouble with this one. Most of the first section of rooms have those fucking giant invis boys, so it takes quite a while to have everyone walk up to each one and give them a whack. There's a lot of rooms, so if you don't have a good squad that works well together, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Mistakes are incredibly costly, which is fine and all if this section was the only one you had to face. Which leads to the third and most specific fun killer for me. Having to repeat large sections of content because shit be whack in the second half. The extraction part of E1 is a level in itself. It's hands down the hardest section to hit the game. And here's the thing. That difficulty is completely fine. If you're gonna have a level that requires perfect precision and lock, fine. But don't put that extremely difficult section at the end of an already difficult level. To me, it's to the point of masochism. Fighting for hours and hours, tediously beating the first part of a level you've done over and over again just to get a chance to learn that last section, let alone beat it. In this clip, my group had 100% ammo, health, everything. And we made it about halfway. That's insanity to me. I know perfectly well that we didn't execute it that well. The majority of us were completely new to that section, but one of the guys we were with said that he had tried that last section easily 50 times and still hadn't gotten through it. At first, my friend made a decent point by saying he assumed 10 Chambers made E1 so luck-based because they wanted people to have to keep playing. It would give the hardcore fans a good challenge and would solidify their game as one of the most difficult out there. But Rundown 3 is either out right now or a couple days away, which my buddy and I thought we would be waiting at least another month for it to come out. Which makes me wonder again, why make E1 so frustratingly difficult if time wasn't a factor? Even Rundown 1's last level didn't do that. Rundown 1 was significantly easier than 2, but R1D1 was still challenging to learn and it introduced the new invisible enemy concept in an awesome way. The lights dimmed to a close, and we heard ear-piercing screeches in the background. As we watched mines blow up to nothing, sentries spot shadows but not shoot. It was done flawlessly. It was utterly terrifying the first time. I love GTFO because after finally figuring out the map and beating it, I get that hit of dopamine and think, man, I really did my part there, pulled my weight, and we did it. This feels great. If I would have tried to beat E1 past the 10-ish hours I already put in to try to beat it, all I would have thought is, Jesus Christ, I'm glad that's over. I can finally put my energy towards something else. Yes, I would have been happy to have that E1 completion, but would I have had fun getting to that point? In this case, I didn't think the ends justified the means. I gave up. But I can't help feeling like I threw in the towel for all the wrong reasons. To me, the level isn't too hard. It's too tedious. I simply don't want to put tens of hours into the level just to finally have enough resources and enough luck to get the completion. Other levels were long, but fair. They rewarded careful and well-thought-out gameplay. E1 is just long, and doesn't feel rewarding like the other levels. I've done my fair share of talking, and I want to hear what you guys think. Personally, I think they should have blocked off the cheese spots, added an enemy or two into each room, and nerfed the hell out of the extraction section. They'd still have a very challenging level. Would it have been hard enough to be fun to the hardcore players? I can't say. But I believe it would have made the level a lot more fun for a lot more players. All in all, I really do think the devs are doing a fantastic job with the game, especially knowing how small their team is. Games take time, and by no means am I taking E1 as a reason to stop playing. I loved the rest of the rundown, especially D2, and Nark and I are waking up early Thursday morning to get a head start on th Rundown 3. If there's not already new content after this video, there should be some soon, but until then, I'm 2KLO, and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Stay safe and have a good one.